The AR-15 is America's rifle. They are so abundant that it leaves us with an unusual problem. Too many options. But fear not, friends, the 1911 Syndicate is here to help you navigate the market. So join us, and down the rabbit hole we go. To put things in perspective, there's north of 20 million AR-15s in circulation in the U.S. today. Now, it took the U.S. about 75 years to reach a population of 20 million. By contrast, the civilian version of the AR-15 was introduced in 1963, meaning it only took 61 years for the AR market to reach 20 million. So with a market that huge, how do you navigate it when the range of guns goes from hot garbage to shot Bin Laden in the face? Warning, this could get expensive. When purchasing America's rifle, you, the buyer, needs to be very honest about what you're looking for, meaning capabilities that come with the rifle, the boxes that you're wanting to check with said rifle, and of course, staying within your budget. Today, we have a couple questions to help navigate that. Okay. The first one being, is this a plinking rifle? Meaning, is this just something you go to the range with, shoot maybe 100, 200 rounds a year? Shoot a sofa. And that's it. <laughs> shoot a sofa. It's uh, Utah. That's what people do out here. there's a sofa. Take, take yep. a sofa. I've seen a boat out here where we are right now. Interesting. The other side of that could be you're a serious shooter that shoots anywhere from 1,000 to two, 3,000 rounds a year. You take several courses throughout the year, so you need something that's maybe not the highest end, but a reliable, good rifle. A tad bit more uh, attention to detail, yeah. a tad bit more robust. Better quality control, things of that sort. Sure, okay. Right? What operating system would you like? Right, this, especially if you're new to ARs and purchasing your first AR, there's an endless debate on DI, or direct impingement, or a piston-driven system. Sure. We're gonna get into that later in the video, but these are just things as we start the video for you guys to keep in mind as we go through the tiers of rifles. Yeah, sure. and I would tell everyone at home, you know, um, we, we, get, we get asked questions on this a lot, which is really why we're making the video, which is just like, oh, you know, which, What's your favorite AR? That's the one that always gets me. And I'm like, bro, this, you're asking the wrong question, man. It's a very deep um, and wide rabbit hole. Yeah, you, you know, and it's like, I'm thinking about getting a new AR, what should I get? Okay, cool. That's almost more in line with what the video is, which is like, because first thing I always ask people is, well, what's your budget, bro? Yep. Um, you know, and the second thing I would probably want to know is, how much do you shoot? Yeah. Um, Realistically, how yeah, much do you Yeah, shoot? being honest with yourself. Yeah. It's like, hey, realistic expectations, like, don't BS yourself. Like yeah. you're just gonna do yourself a disservice. And I'll give some anecdotal evidence a little bit further in the video of what that really looks like. So we're gonna kind of break down tiers. Is that tiers the of rifles? So we're gonna have entry level, mm -hmm. mid, high, and then bonus round, Gucci. Gucci tier. There will be a price associated with said tier, and we'll get into that at each tier. Mm -hmm. The last question that we want to ask though, mm -hmm. and it's not something we're gonna get hung up on, is would you prefer forged or billet? Mm, okay. okay. Because I think when most people are looking for a new rifle or getting into rifles, their biggest concerns that they hear should be concerns from the internet, which don't believe everything you hear from the internet, is forge versus billet, and if that's really important. Cool, so. and at each of these tiers, we'll give you a, um, just a, a small sampling of some different guns you might consider at those tiers. Just a nice sprinkle. Yep, a little, little salt bay sprinkle and yep. rock and roll. Yep, 
But before we get into that, heaven forbid you were in a self-defense scenario with one of these rifles that we're going to get into. Yeah, I like to party. You would want something called firearms legal protection. Yeah, well, I'll, if I, you know, I'm at a party and things go south and some, you know, and I got to do something and I got to defend myself and it's legally justified shooting, um, firearms legal protection, they'll cover all them fees associated with that bad boy. Not fees, only, yeah. not only do they cover the fees. When you call after said scenario, you're talking to a actual lawyer, Which is not good. a customer service representative. Yeah, Betty and customer service, like, hey, she's sweet. last person. She doesn't actually work at FLP. Maybe she does. If you call there and a Betty picks up the phone, and tell her hi from us. But um, that's not who I need to talk to. Nope. Um, I, I need actual legal advice. So they got the hotline for that. I keep the little card in my wallet. Oh yeah, same um, here. You know that way if cool. shit ever fortunately pops, pops off, off, just yeah. like hey, I'm busting out the card. Um, sir on the other end of the phone huh. i got in some shit i probably wouldn't say it that way i'd say sir there was an incident but in reality i got in some shit and i need to figure this out can you Correct. help me sort this out the other big feature that i really like is the cleanup crew so if you happen to be at this party and make a mess they will provide a cleanup crew to clean up said mess well someone's got to do that job guys the deal is the code is 1911 um don't you dare think about spelling that out. It's literally the numbers, one, nine, one, one. If you ever spell it out, I will never let you live that down. That saves you guys a bunch of money off the different uh, tiers, a few different tiers kind of based on your lifestyle. You guys can click on the link down in the video description, check that out. Appreciate those guys. Let's start talking about some guns. As we go through these categories, Jake, we're gonna also expound upon the information because as we move up in category, more options, surprisingly, open up. Shocker. This base one is entry level AR-15s, sub $1,000. Okay. Okay, and what, what rifle do you have here for this as an example? Um, so this is actually my truck gun. This is a SIG M400. Uh, this rifle is um, nothing I would brag about, um, but that said, it is reliable. It is kitted out in, in the most horrible of ways. Um, but I'm on team, I want a cheap, shitty truck gun. That way, if something happens to it, I'm not super butthurt about it. But let's let's expound on that a little bit more. You say cheap and shitty, but also, does that mean it's not reliable? No, like I said, okay. uh, it's, it's not a high round count gun for me. I mean, yes. this is not something I shoot hardly ever, but it's like, I've never actually had a malfunction on it. It is just, it is inexpensive. I don't think that's necessarily to say that it's shitty, it's to say that it is inexpensive. There you go. And the reason why I kind of preface that is we're gonna preface it in further categories as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a DI gun. Yes. And we're gonna expound upon what DI means. Okay. So for those people that are somewhat new, DI or direct impingement is the operating system that we're gonna find across the board in this price point. Mm -hmm. Really, the other operating system piston, which we're gonna get into later on, you only find that at higher price points because it just is a more expensive design yeah. inherently. Sure. Okay, so what is direct impingement, right? As you are shooting the weapon, round comes out the barrel, the gases are following it, they go up into a tube called what, Jake? The gas tube, shocking. Back into the bolt carrier group, up into the upper receiver, which then cycles the weapon, ejecting the spent casing, feeding in a new one, and that cycle repeats itself, mm -hmm. okay? Reason why we felt it was important to explain that, because this may seem like basic gun information. Some people might be watching this video where this is basic gun information. You don't know this, so you're welcome. Right, Jake? Yeah, 100%. Couple other examples we have within this price point, just because we want to mention a couple other options. This isn't the only option. We have your Smith & Wesson M&P Sport. Probably the most common one. Prolific, I yeah. right? Uh, Ruger makes an option. Right, the, uh, let me reference these, the AR-556. You have, of course, Palmetto State Armory. Sure, yeah, yeah. that'd be definitely a name in that category. <clears throat> and there's one that I don't have personal time on, but I've been hearing a lot about, the new Stag rifles, Stag Arms. Okay, sure. Apparently their entry-level AR-15s come with a lot of great accessories. We just didn't have access to one, which is why we went with this. Yeah, yeah. But those no, are a couple options for okay. you guys. I personally believe this is where 80 to 90% of your average gun guy are gonna fall into. Sure. Hear me out on this, okay? I worked a gun counter for a decade plus at this point, uh -huh. right? I've sold a lot of rifles at all different levels. Most guys, if they're being honest with themselves, take this rifle to the range two, three, maybe four times a year, and they shoot anywhere between 150 to max, and I mean max, 300 rounds. Yeah. Sure. Guys, this seems like a lot. Let me give you an example. Customers come in to buy an entry-level rifle all the time. They buy two to three boxes of ammo. How many rounds is that? 100? 150? Because no, no, no. they're 20 round boxes. Oh, well, I see 50 boxes. See? So I mean 40 to 60 rounds? Yeah. 60 rounds. Typically, guys come in to buy ammo when they're going to the range again, which right. is another two to three boxes. So basic math, once a quarter if they're doing that, which is, again, we're trying to be realistic with you guys here as much as we can at this level. 
you're 200 rounds a year. Yeah. Right? So. And, and, and also, there's nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Like, to be very clear about that, like, that, that's not meant in any sort of dig way. It's just like, hey, you may decide at the end of this video, you're like, man, I really want that Knight's rifle. Okay, cool. Like, we'll talk about Knight's later in the yep. sort of the Gucci tier, but, but it's just like, if it, ultimately, if you want that, great, send it, dude. But it's like, um, there's nothing wrong with being like, dude, I shoot 150 rounds a year of Smith & Wesson. It's totally fine by me. I agree. No, because that that opens you up too at that price range for optics. Yeah. Some other accessories. I, I believe most rifles should have a light, an optic, and a sling. Those are like the main minimum. Sure. Right? That also leaves you money for training, mm -hmm. which is more important than almost all of this, right? Sure. Is knowing how to use the firearm. Reason why we wanted to expound upon that is this is just being honest. Okay. In this price point, you're not going to get a lot of Gucci accessories and features. Okay. This comes with a basic quad rail. The M&P Sport comes with an M-Lock rail now, which is pretty cool, full-length M-Lock rail. But it used to be just, we've seen them, it's the basic looking AR forend, right? Mm -hmm. The plastic with the heat shield inside. So at this, this level, you're gonna get forged also. You're not gonna see a lot of billet options. Billet increases price a little bit. Um, <clears throat> forged lowers are basically forged the way that they are, okay? It's a mold, they make a billion of them. Billet, you get a receiver that then is cut down to size that increases price. Yeah. So at this price point, you're getting very basic entry level features that for 80 to 90% of gun guys, I hate to say it, is just as good and you're gonna do just fine with it. Yeah, totally agree. So, right? So on to the next tier. So as we move up to the second tier, which is your $1,000 to $2,000 range, I personally believe even serious gun guys, this is where 99% of them can fall into, man. Um, my original BCM KMR here, and this is the KMR with the uh, magnesium aluminum rail, not the KMR A, which is just the aluminum. This I purchased for $1,300 10 years ago. Okay. Okay. I have, I mean, it, it's spray painted. It looks like shit. It's been spray painted nine times. It's been the class we met at, I ran this. Every other class we've taken since then, well, till recently, I ran this. It had 20,000 rounds through it when I rebarreled it with trajectory arms mm -hmm. um, and that was the stock bcg stock barrel stock everything it's fallen off of roofs it's i mean it has all the rounds it's been slammed in car doors it has been beat to absolute shit. and for 1300 dollars, i think that's pretty good pretty good value sure right we also see your brands like daniel defense in that right which great rifles legacy brand they have some military contracts not that that means anything but it does lean you towards, hey, they make a good gun. Sure. Right? And then we see stuff like Griffin. Yeah. At this price point, we also see, and I'm gonna let you expound on it here in a little bit, <clears throat> we start to see some more features, mm -hmm. meaning some uh, ambidextrous options mm -hmm. open up. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, at sort of this MIDI price range, so this is a 300 blackout gun. Uh, so in case in the opening, you're like, man, that 556 sounds legit. It's 300 blackout Which subs. in future videos, we'll talk about calibers. We're just talking about rifles right now. Um, but uh, this is a gun we did a full video on, but to be honest, in that one to $2,000 price point, typically my, my two things I would tell people is like, hey, uh, Daniel Defense and BCM would be the two things kind of come to mind for me. Yep. Um, that said, having some time on this and a handful of different Griffin products, I would definitely say it's worth noting because I believe these go for like, 1600 or, or something like that but this is even a full like a full ambi gun which, which is actually pretty stunning at that price point and i'm a lefty so i appreciate stuff yeah. like that um a ton of value uh, to be honest and i never had a malfunction on it i do know that it definitely gets more tlc and attention in, in terms of just building a proper gun than you know some entry level stuff so it's like it, it's definitely worth mentioning yeah yeah definitely not entry level i'd for sure put in that mid um those run like you said anywhere from 16 to 18 is what i was finding them for sure okay Reason why this tier I think also fits for most people is the example I just gave there. If you're a, a shooter shooter, like a guy who actually trains, you're putting in 500 rounds a quarter, okay? I think that's fair. Every couple range trips, you're putting in two to 300 rounds, okay. right? 500 a quarter, a couple thousand a year, and you probably take a class or two a year, mm -hmm. right? Not that the previous tier couldn't handle that. At the class we met at, there's a dude running a stock Smith & Wesson that ran that whole class with zero issues, and it was 1,200 rounds in three days. Cool. But I think for people who train, train, take this serious, build the gun out how they want, like really kind of get into shooting at a different level, this is where 
99% of those guys can fall into. Yes, there's Gucci stuff out there with different features at better at higher price points. If we're going to be realistic with ourselves, which is the point of this video, I believe most guys fit into that category. Yeah, I, I think to suggest that there is more that you need than what you're getting at this price tier, I think you have the potentially to start or the potential to start being a little dishonest with yourself where it's like this does everything i would need it to do and i'm someone who shoots quite a bit it's like i don't actually need any more than this yep. i like more than this i get more than this because it's like that's what i'm drawn to to suggest that i need it i, I think would be a little disingenuous if we're being real yeah right at this price point too we still stay within that di category there are some piston options out there but I, I, I really don't think it's anything worth your salt if i'm gonna be honest um and i i'd have to double check on a couple other things on that anyways yeah. but di gun reason why i bring that up in this category is this is also non-proprietary parts all these guns will fit with standard ar parts that you can find in any shop around the country mm -hmm. so if we're going to be realistic about price point your training and what the maintenance is going to look like that's why this category fits literally 99 percent of people Sure. You can replace parts easy if you need to. It's going to be a robust system that's going to last a long time. You're going to be able to train and beat the hell out of it and have success with it. So, guess what, everyone? One of the sponsors of today's video, Big Tech's Ordnance, is freaking here. How about this? Hell yeah, dude. Thanks for having me. How about this? Well, this awesome. Bonding, becoming best friends, yeah, talking about guns. Yeah, come out here in the desert and shoot some guns. It's just fantastic. Like, Roasting in the heat. Um, so, you guys make, or, well, you sell a lot of different accessory related stuff, but you actually make some stuff. Yeah, so we've got a new kind of offshoot uh, company. It's the same ownership and everything. It's kind of like our creative outlet, so mm -hmm. to speak. Kratos Design Group. Mm -hmm. So we make uh, a handful of things right now, like on here on Chris's rifle, we've got a, our Kratos hand stop yep. and our angled QD mount. It's just a small little hand stop, nice little place to index your hand, nothing too big, doesn't get in the way really. Just yep. a small little index point. Nope, I got one on my nights too. Brace it against. And then our angled QD mount is cool. It allows you to run a QD mount kind of at an angle, keeps it back towards you. Mm -hmm. You can also put it in some places where you normally wouldn't be able to, like if you have a, a flashlight on this side or something. Mm -hmm. Gives you a little bit more options. Uh, it's made out of 4140 steel, so you have a steel QD sling mount that's yep. going into a steel socket. It's slick. It works a lot better than aluminum, so we're pretty proud of it. We think it's cool. And then no, we've got, it's cool. Got a bunch more stuff coming out. We're releasing stuff like crazy. And so that's all on the big tech site, I would assume? Yep, everything on there is on the big tech site. And yeah. Let's see if you remember. Do you remember our code for people to save 10% off? So it's not Browning High Power. No, um, we've eliminated that. <laughs> Uh, I believe it's 1911 SYN. SYN, yes, S Y N. S -Y -N. Don't all you dare word, put an together, I in right? there. Yeah, that's correct. I don't know if it's capital. Just fuck her. You'll figure it out. Fuck no around, and you'll find out. Um, but yeah, anyway, the Kratos stuff really cool. And then beyond that, you know, lights, optics, all kinds of other accessories. Oh yeah, all that pretty much like. everything you see on this gun and on this gun, except for the LCA, which they don't make them anymore. But yeah, can't do anything about that. Beyond that, tons of cool stuff. Check it out. Beyond that, um, the 1911 Syndicate. Um, hey. Patreon would be a great way you guys could truthfully support us. Um, interest rates suck right now. For those of you that don't know, uh, we're in the real estate business, so interest rates suck. I didn't make them up. I'm not in the Fed, um, so I can't really control the real estate market, but it sucks right now. So if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, um, we try to produce the best content we can. Patreon's a great way to do it. It's linked below. That's it. Let's get on with the show. So as we move, move up in tiers, the high category, the high tier, I guess, would be $2,000 to $3,000. Okay. Okay. We see companies open up to DI guns like Cobalt here to adjustable DI guns like Type A, mm -hmm. meaning they have an adjustable gas block so you can tune the gun, mm -hmm. right? So we're starting to see some different personality come out of companies, right? It's not run of the mill stuff, mm -hmm. okay? We also get into more piston driven stuff. At previous price points, it's just really hard to find anything worth a damn that's piston driven. But much like a short stroke piston system, system in the Sig Sauer, that's an option. They also make DI guns. So here's a company that makes both. Yeah, I was to gonna say, so yeah, okay. Right, to give you the options. Then last but not least, we have a long stroke gas piston system by PWS. Yes. So since we previously spoke about what a DI or direct impingement system is, now we're gonna talk about piston driven guns and what the difference is between the two, okay? So SIG, or since you're holding the PWS, let's just start with that. A piston system gun is very similar to a DI gun. Gas goes down the barrel into a tube that then from there changes. The gas hits a piston, mm -hmm. in this case, a long stroke piston system. A long stroke piston system has a, a full length rod on the piston itself that is attached to the BCG. Mm -hmm. 
So once the gas hits that rod, in this case, they call it an op rod for PWS, your bolt carrier group and that op rod cycle the weapon all at the same time. Which is the same way an AK works or a yep. lot of different yeah. foreign guns, you know. Yep, I had here guns. in my example, an AK being the example. Mm -hmm. That is not an AR-15, but this is, for all intents and purposes, a AK style piston system in an AR platform, yeah, which PWS is is known for. That's their thing. And I mean, if you wanted to be um, different or if you're like, hey, I've got three other DI guns, I just want to kind of like <coughs> switch it up. Yeah, you could do a short, short piston or if you w really wanted that like fusion of AK and AR, I, I, I mean, a PWS really is, and they also make DI guns. Yeah. Um, but it's like a PWS is kind of undeniable. And I mean, it's like, look, I've never had a malfunction on this gun. Gun runs incredibly clean. Uh, it's a very nice suppressed shooting gun. Um, With a quick shooting. adjust gas block too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and shooting suppressed pistons uh, definitely do have some advantages to staying uh, cooler, but also um, less wear and tear in the system, less, uh, you know, uh, carbon and everything blowing back into the system. Correct. Um, as we'll see with multiple <laughs> piston guns that are yeah. out here. Mm -hmm. And the reason with that is because, like I'd mentioned on the long stroke, a short stroke is going to function very similar. Gas goes into a tube that hits a piston. This piston is not connected to the BCG on a short stroke. It violently slams into the BCG, cycling the weapon, loading another round, and you're on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even within the piston system, we see a little bit of differences For sure. okay, on how they run. And even within that, I mean, even within the category of short stroke pistons there's variations Correct. like hk has their thing sig's gonna have their thing it's like i don't know how many different versions there are but it's, it's like it's a lot of different short stroke pistons yeah there's self-regulating gas piston systems sure hk right? hk or um we see a couple others out there we didn't have access to those specific ones outside of hk which we'll get into later but the big advantage of this and i you kind of gloss over it but this is the reason why i want to highlight it is it keeps the weapon clean like mm -hmm. Like simply put, DI just blows all the shit back into your upper receiver. Yeah. Piston mitigates that quite a bit. To the tune of, I mean, a lot of your piston guns, you don't clean. I'll throw oil on them before I shoot them, but I really don't take actual cleaner to them and scrub them down because the truth is they don't need it, man. They mm -hmm. just want a little lubrication and they're good to go because there's just not much blowing back into the system. And keep in mind, these are suppressed guns, which is going to increase, again, how much carbon is blowing back into that system. And it's like, these guns are run very, very clean. Yep. Now... That all sounds great, especially when we said DI guns get a little bit dirtier. So why would I choose a DI gun over a piston gun with all those good things we laid out? <laughs> My answer is this. A lot of people like to complain about weight when it comes to rifles. Piston guns are inherently gonna be a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. There's more parts, the parts are a little bit overbuilt, so they're just gonna have added weight. Sure. On top of that, they are proprietary parts. Yeah. Okay, DI guns, you can almost go into any gun store in the nation and buy replacement parts fairly easy. Piston guns, you're gonna have to most likely order the parts directly from the manufacturer, which then means you're hoping that they're in stock, you're hope, you know, all the things that could potentially go wrong with that. Sure. So those are kind of the main differences at this price point. Okay, now another thing we find at this price point, like, well, if these are just DI guns, why are they a little more expensive than the previous category? Okay, because even within Valid this category, question. we see companies like Cobalt Kinetics, DI gun, these are made out of billet though. So billet again, different way to manufacture the upper and lower receiver. This is a point of contention for people on the internet. So you guys hear me out on this. There's a big argu argument that billet is stronger than forged. At the same okay. time, yeah. I think from all the engineer guys I talked to and everyone in the gun industry that we talked to, it's a moot point. Like really the biggest reason people like to go to billet is you can start making either some weird geometry as far as yeah. where like buttons are put, yep, or yep. in this case, this is a semi monolithic upper, meaning it's a proprietary upper receiver. Mm -hmm. Upper receiver is extended to here, which then deslaves the barrel from the handguard, meaning the barrel is not touching the handguard at all. It's a free float system mm -hmm. that gives you better accuracy. But that's why a gun like this in this category, even though it's being a DI gun, there's some proprietary stuff inside of it. Mm -hmm. Type A, another great example. This is an adjustable DI gun. Yeah. Okay, overbuilt, over-engineered, they make everything in-house, which again, that's gonna dictate price a little bit. Sure. But you see at this price point, most people are making almost all their parts in-house and they have some features that make them stand out from the previous tier. Yeah, I wouldn't go as far as to say that at that tier, everyone's making their lowers because there's not that many companies that make lowers. Correct. Um, Didn't mean it that way. I meant like 
Yeah, no, no, no. I just 90% hear, of it's I, done. you know, he, hear the internet yep. uh, rumble because, you know, there's not that many companies that actually forge lowers. Yep. Um, but, you know, uh, amongst the things that, you know, my type A is not an ambidextrous gun. All I need, by the way, is a lefty for those of you that might be thinking about getting an AR and you're like, but I'm a lefty shooter, you know, so I need to spend all this money to get an ambi gun. All you truthfully need um, is an ambidextrous safety, um, much in the way on a 1911. 2011, look, the truth is, that's all you need. Anything beyond that, the challenge that you'll have from a lefty perspective with full ambi guns is that- And let's say that again, from a lefty perspective, because people are gonna argue with it with you on that. Sure, like I'm not a total clown show when it comes to talking about lefty shit. Um, but you go, okay, let's look at these two. I, I haven't actually done this, so I don't even know how much truth is there gonna be to this. But let's just say the ambidextrous um, mag release button, okay, here it is on the SIG. It's pushing pivoting, back. Pivoting panel. This one's pivoting down, yeah. slightly different positions. The most variation you'll see is on the bolt releases. So this is just a button that pushes in for me. This is a lever that you will push down. The manual of arms are completely different. It, well, maybe not completely different is, is a is an over exaggeration, but it's like these are different guns. So it's like there's a degree to which if you get a lot of different guns and you get a lot of different ambi guns, they're all gonna be a little bit different. So the truth is all you really need is an ambidextrous safety because that's the mm. thing that you actually need to get good with. Everything else, you can work as a lefty on a right-handed gun. Coming from a lefty, you're saying? Yes, an ambi charging handle would be beneficial, not critical. Okay. Beyond that, you're good to go, guys. And I will make, make one point that at this price point, I think even if it's needed or not, I think your gun should be ambidextrous at this price point, that two to 3,000 range. I would like it to be. It should be a standard in that price point. Yeah. I think even our live audience would agree with that. So, so cover this tier. Let's move on to our bonus tier, Gucci. So at this last category, last but not least, especially financially, you see the joke there? I got it. You didn't laugh. Well, yeah, it was average. Damn it. Yeah. No, last I, I, but I not least. Onward and upward, I say we see the Gucci category, okay? So this is typically for the people who are a little bit snobby with gun ownership. They like to, even though admitting Nike's and Adidas, same shoe, same kid in China makes them. Mm. Nike's a little more expensive for the name. I don't know anyone like that. I'm not he. You're not him? I am not that guy. You don't look him in the mirror every morning? Never heard of him. No, okay. I would say this is the tier. It is a guy who's been doing this for a long time. He's got some extra disposable income. He doesn't really care about being realistic. He just wants what, you know, SEAL Team whatever is running or the, you know, Call of Duty has this. And so these guns being those guns, an HK 416, MR556, but it's a 416 clone. Yeah. Okay. And a Knight's SR15. And we don't know who these guns belong to because it's not me because I'm not that into the cool guy shit. We found these. Yeah. These are loners from the desert. The With desert loaned them to us. <laughs> okay. Within this category though, we see not only DI guns, piston guns, right? DI, piston. We see proprietary DI. Yeah, right, okay. yeah, sure. Right? So Knight's Armament, although being a DI gun, has some proprietary parts. Their BCG and Bolt are proprietary mm -hmm. and their gas system are proprietary, along with their um, buffer. The buffer is a specific weight for their like intermediate Knight's mid-length gas system, whatever they call it, okay. right? Um, you'll see within this, the piston driven system also, like I said, from two legacy brands, right? These are Gucci the Gucci, kind of some of the top tier brands that everyone knows, everyone's in love with. Yeah, I think people totally sleep on HK uh, MR556s though. But because of like the video we did last year, people think it's just this long gun that it's just like this, this match rifle. It's like that, that it's an MR556. It started out as a 16 inch MR556. Yeah. Like that ain't close to resembling what it is now. No, and you you chopped it down and did a bunch of work to it. Yeah, yeah, right? replaced gas blocks, everything. And the, you know, the biggest argument people don't like those is just the weight, which- Yeah, it's heavy, I get it. But totally also, get it. You're not humping 10 miles through the desert, so does it really matter? No, and you know, people, uh, may I go on a, a, a brief tangent while, while you yeah. look at that? Yeah. So, um, you, you know, people, we did a real early video on the channel, and I mean, when I didn't know my ass from my face in terms of making videos, and I basically said, you know, that this Knight's here is like my end of the world rifle. And people, you know, I, I get messages still years later, and, and people are like, is that still your like end of days rifle? And I'm like, okay, would I trust this in that scenario? Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. can't recall a malfunction I've ever had on this gun. This gun is heavily used at this point. Um, you know, so it's like, 
yeah, I would 100% trust it for that. I'd 100% trust that for, I'm gonna call it a 416. You guys can be pissy Relax. about the MR556 thing. But it's like, I would 100% trust that in that capacity. So it's just like, I, I think the question where people always make the mistake is they go, this or that. And I, th I think you're missing the mark on the question. I think the real question should begin with, if they're going Knights versus HK, they're going, what, you know, which one? You go, I think the real question is, are they both good? Fundamentally, are they both good? Because mm -hmm. if you're asking, does one suck? In which case, if, if I said, okay, the Knights sucks, then you got your answer, go get sure. the HK. But if the answer is, hey, they're both good, at that point, it's a matter of like, I don't know, dude, which one do you think's cooler? They both fucking rock, so yeah. like, take your pick. Does one look cooler? Do you like the history of more one? Is one more available? Is one less expensive? Pick whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, they're both good, who cares? Well, and you know, one of the biggest things that people tout with Knights, let's just use this as an example, is the bolt, you don't gotta replace the bolt or the barrel for 20,000 rounds, mm -hmm. okay? My BCM at $1,300 achieved sure. the same thing, yeah. right? So more expensive doesn't always mean better. Not at all. Oftentimes, you're just getting different feature sets, mm -hmm. okay? And sometimes it is better. Co correct, yeah. but oftentimes, let's be real. They're all good. They're all <laughs> adequate guns, right? Yeah. Again, this is for a, a guide for your average gun guy, a guy who's getting into it, you know, newer and someone who might be a shooter shooter, right? Yeah. So I think we wanted to mention these just because there is some proprietary stuff that's even DI out there, which yeah. is why I wanted to highlight that. And then when you get to the Gucci brands, yes, they're nice. Yes, they have some features that are awesome. Great track records. But if we're being realistic, which is the whole point of this video, mm -hmm. like I just said with my example, my BCM has been awesome. Yeah. Now I've kind of grown and progressed past that. But it's not a bad rifle. Sure. You know? it, I mean, you, you really got to keep in mind, I, I mean, your, your budget dictates so much. Because if you're like, hey, I'm buying my first rifle, but um, I have basically an unlimited budget. So, like, you know, if I want, like, would you, you know, suggest this? I'd be like, it's not a matter of suggestion, but, but I'm saying if you're like, you got an unlimited budget and you want to get an educate, knock yourself out. If you're saying... Hey, you know, I'm thinking about swiping my card and you know, I'm working college kids, should I get this? I'd probably say absolutely not. Please, like don't go into debt for the sake of buying any of this shit. You can either pay for it or you can't. Um, but it's like you got to keep in mind. I mean, this gun base is like 3200 bucks. Now, that's before we start chopping barrels. I mean, uh, charging handles been swapped, you know, grip, um, safety, quad rail, new gas block, cam, light, optic, I mean, uh, slimline stock. I mean, we start going down the list. You go, look, as configured, okay, as in as you see it here, I mean, you're probably looking at eight? a $7,000 Seven, yeah. rifle, you, you know, and it's just like, you might be like, oh, easy day. I spend $100,000 on pretty shotguns. Okay, cool. Like, this is a drop in the bucket for you. Knock yourself out, dude. Have fun. Yeah. But to suggest you need this, not at all. Correct. Needs and wants are different. Yes. Right? So some final thoughts as we wrap up, right, is hopefully this gave you guys, the viewers, some solid baseline information. This is not an in-depth video where we talk about barrels and metallurgy and all this other stuff that people like to get into. That will be further down the road in another video. But the questions we want you to remember, what is my honest and truthful answer of what I'm looking for in a rifle currently? Whether mm -hmm. you're new experienced or just like to be snobby like like you um which category achieves my needs the best and last but not least one of the things that i wanted to throw in there is if there is a cheaper category that fits exactly what you're looking for that leaves you more money for accessories and more importantly training mm -hmm. right um, all these guns don't mean anything unless you know how to train so if we're going to be realistic with ourselves i would prefer a rifle that I can get some good accessories on and have some money left over to get some legitimate training from a verified instructor. Sure. So, and with that, we're done. Mm -hmm.